Hello painters and welcome back. Today it's hammer time. Mike Hammer time that is. Now you might be thinking who's Mike Hammer? Mike Hammer is a blob painter or at least that's what he calls himself. He makes these really interesting 3D paintings with blobs or circles of paint. So I am going to try and do something just a little bit similar with that today. I think sometimes it's good to do the opposite of what you normally do. Normally I thin my paints to make them flow and I paint with runny paints. Today I am going to thicken my paints and paint with thick paints, so paints that aren't going to move at all. So let me uh, get everything together and I'll show you what I've got. So these are the little bottles of paint that I'm going to be using today. Zooming in so you can take a closer look there, so it'll come into focus. These are little bottles that I got from Amazon with a little needle tip and they're very small and they also come with a teeny teeny little um, funnel. There we go, little funnel for filling up the teeny teeny bottle. And I'm gonna use these with the thickened paints. So I've got them all mixed up just here. I'm using all these DecoArt Crafters Acrylics paints. This is one of my favorite sets. Um, I've used this set of paints in a lot of paintings before. There are six coordinated colors. Oh, I need my glasses. Where are they? Well, I think the cat has eaten my regular glasses. <laughs> Let's find these ones. Okay, so there is a green, a grasshopper green, that one. Then a lovely yellow, which is buttercream. Then this one is grape taffy. The lovely blue is island blue. The orange is a bright orange and the pink is a tutti frutti. So I've got all of those mixed up in my little bottles and this time no pouring medium. What I've used instead is this one. You can see it just here. This one is the Deco Art Media Heavy Gel Medium and this says build texture with this extra thick viscosity medium ideal for impasto increases paint body can be tinted etc uh, um, soap and water clean up water based so what i did was i took um, one tablespoon of paint to a half a tablespoon of this heavy gel medium and mixed them together and then put them into these little bottles and so the little funnels came in very handy for that and I'm going to try and create circles or blobs of paint on my little canvas here that will be 3D so that when they dry they'll hold their shape instead you know if you leave a drop of paint and you leave it to dry it just goes flat so as the water from it evaporates. Now that these are mixed with the gel medium, I'm hoping that they will keep some height to them. So um, they will become a paint blob or a little paint mound as opposed to just a little flat paint puddle. I'm also going to use this one. This is a DecoArt Craft Twinkles Writer because this is a nice gold glittery thingy and I like to have lots of gold and metallics and glitter. So I'm gonna put this in with here. Now the first thing I'm gonna do um, is just set out a few random circles and this project is going to take me quite some time probably maybe even two weeks we'll have to wait and see because each time I put the circles I need to wait for them to fully dry before I put the next circles on top so I'm using a, a six inch um, birch panel and I've painted the top black and I've protected the sides with um, some masking tape and I'm going to put my circles of paint on. So let's get the, the caps off and get started with a few circles. Okay, so I want to do circles of varying different sizes um, and I don't always want the same colour combinations. So I'm going to just start off and um, do some fairly large ones because these ones will have other colours put on top of them um, once they're dry. So if I start off with them fairly large, it gives me room to put other colours. So just to make sure these nibs aren't, oops, nibs aren't going to clog up, I'm going to wipe them each time before I put the little cap on. The bottles come with a little needle cap and then it has a little rubber thing on the top there to put it on there so it doesn't dry out. So let's go with some more colours. 
And my plan is also to leave some space um, because what I want to do is once my first couple of layers of paint are dry, I want to put a resin coat on it and then I want to float more paint on the resin coat so that it seems like it's floating above the surface and then once that's dry more paints more layers of resin and I'm going to build it up and just see what happens I don't really know what's going to happen it's going to be an experiment but I'm looking forward to having a bit of fun by playing with something new okay What I like about this paint set as well is that all the colours are easily coordinated. Someone has picked them for me, so I don't need to pick them myself and get one colour that isn't going to match or something. I've used these before and I know that they always work perfectly together. So here I've done a fairly flat one. Here with the bubble, instead of spreading it out, I just put the needle through the centre and I let the bubble spread out on itself. So this one may dry with more volume than that one. And again, I'm going to vary the sizes. So some will be bigger, some will be smaller than others because some will have more layers than others. Okay, I think I'm happy with that as my first layer. It's given me plenty of black space where I can put the resin and then build the layers up afterwards. And I've got plenty of larger bubbles on here where I can layer up some more colors. So now the waiting process begins and I'll be back and show you the next layer. Well, as you can see, the piece has moved on a little bit since you saw it last time. I've added some of the gold dots around the, uh, the background here with that gold writer. And I've also added three layers of colour now. But of course, I've still got some blank spaces. My next step is to add some resin. And I just have a little bit of resin here left over from a project I'm working on. So I thought it would be a great... Um, opportunity to use it on this. What I'm going to try and do is not put it on the dots, just put it on the black. So we will see how I get on. I'm just going to try and drizzle it with a stick and fill in some of these gaps between the, the paint dots themselves and then allow it to um, spread out and settle. I can put it over the gold, that's okay. But what I want to do is raise up a little bit of a, a clear background which I can then use to float more of the paint dots on and give it more of a, a 3D effect. So I'm going to try, I mean it doesn't matter as long as I don't go over the, the top of the paint um, where the next dot is going to be. So I can just drizzle it about a little bit. I probably won't have enough resin because as I said it was a bit of a, a leftover from another project and I don't want it to go to waste. So I will fill in as much as I can and then we'll see how it goes. So I'm quickly just working quite quickly because it's already been mixed up for a little while and I'm going to drizzle it about, fill in all the gaps and uh, again this is something you probably don't need me to talk you through because I've got nothing to say to, for myself today. Um, nothing interesting anyway. So I'm just going to carry on filling in with the resin. You can see um, how the, the resin is suddenly making the background really pop. It makes the black much more vibrant. If you look at the black here compared to here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but uh, it's really going to make the colours pop. And of course it's self level so I just kind of drizzle it around a little bit. And uh, providing I put it in the right places and not in the wrong places, I really, I don't think I can go too far wrong. Yeah, I don't think from looking at my cup that I've got enough left over, but it'll be enough anyway for me to make a start. And then I can mix up a little, little, another little batch and just fill in any gaps that I've got left. So this is basically the process. I'm gonna carry on doing this and I'll meet you back here once the resin layer is completed. 
My resin layer is cured now and it looks really good. You can see the reflection from the lights there, so it's got a very, very shiny surface. And if you look carefully, you can see that everything is shiny and the top layers of the paint are free. Those aren't covered in resin so that I can add some more. And my idea is that I will add some extra layers to these ones and then also in the spaces, I will fill with some more paint so it looks like they are floating, or at least that will be the idea. So. I don't know with this very smooth resin surface now whether I put a blob of paint it's going to spread out so um, I think I will put one or two and then I will leave it for a little while see if it spreads and if it's good then I can do a few more. So I think as well as filling in the gaps that what I will plan to do is slightly overlap some of the ones that I've already got there because that might help with the 3D effect if one is overlapping one that was underneath. Okay, so I've got one of each colour. I'm going to leave these uh, to dry up and then providing they don't spread like crazy actually it looks like they are spreading a little bit so it's probably good that I don't go too mad with it um, and then I'll come back and we'll see what it looks like when we put a few more dots on. So yes, as I suspected, these drops of paint did spread a little more on the resin than they would have done on the um, on the painted surface just because it's more slick so I'll have to be aware of that but I am going to go ahead and add in a few more blobs of colour. Um, I haven't got any kind of plan and I'm still unsure really exactly how much coverage I want but I do still want I think to have the nice contrast between the colours and the black so I'm not going to completely cover it in bubbles but uh, let's go ahead and add a few more blobs and then a few more layers. So I think that's that layer completed. I'm gonna let that fully dry and then add another little layer of paint on top. So I think I've done all of the layers of dots on here that I want to now and I've let them uh, dry for a week to make sure everything on there is hopefully fully dry. You can see it's got a lot of dimension to it already where all, there are uh, raised areas of dots and little uh, peaks and valleys in there. So I think it looks really cool. So now it's time to put on the final coat of resin. Now, of course, resin self levels, but it doesn't run uphill. So what I think I'm gonna do is have to drizzle the, resil, the, drizzle the resin on top of each of the little peaks and then let it run down the peaks and settle to self level in the valleys. But we will see how it goes. It might take me a little bit of time, I think, but anything worth doing is worth making an effort. So I'm gonna get my respirator on, get my spectacles on, and then I'll get on and uh, start drizzling some resin.
was hot stuff. So, I've got my resin coat on there, but I can see that I'm having a few problems, unfortunately. It looks as though one of my paints wasn't quite dry, um, despite me leaving it for quite some time, because what I can see happening, if I get my glasses back on, is some of the paints they're actually creating bubbles. It's almost like air bubbles are coming up from within the paint itself and popping. Now I've got the resin on and I'm getting funny little holes, actual pin holes where there were definitely not any before. Now I've put the resin on top. So that's an interesting phenomenon, one that I hadn't been expecting. And I think one that is not gonna be easy to fix because those are definite holes now appearing in the paint. So the, the paint obviously wasn't quite dry um, and the resin has reacted with it and caused these holes to come up, which is a bit disappointing. But hey, this was an experimental project after all. Thank goodness I didn't do a really big one, I just did a small one. However, I'm gonna set this off now to dry, just let any excess resin uh, dribble off the sides and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's all finished. So here it is dry, finished, the resin is now cured and as you can see, it looks pretty damn good. It's got a lovely shine on it. You can see a wonderful reflection of all the lights and at the same time, it has a lot of dimension. So you can see um, the, the raised up areas in it. You can see where certain um, blobs are overlapping other blobs and you get like a 3D effect and underneath the little sparkles of gold here there, here and there. So I'm happy with it. The areas that I'm not happy with, let me see if I can zoom in and still get enough light. Get this one just here. Can you see it has some, come on camera, there we go. Can you see it has some bubbles and the green one and over here on the purple. So these are little pinholes that came up only in about half a dozen places. And I was thinking initially when I was putting the resin on, oh, it must be that the top layer of paint isn't dry. But interesting, some of them are not in the top layer. There's one here, for example, in the yellow, which was like three layers ago. Um, and some more, uh, let's see, over there in the purple, one here in the purple again, you know, three layers ago. So I think it was just um, bubbles and actually in the paint itself, covered by just a very, very thin layer of paint. And when I put the resin on, it was just too much. That little layer broke and it showed the little pinholes from the paint underneath. So it's a, a good lesson to have learned that um, a bit like doing with the acrylic pouring, if I were to do this again, and once I'd put a layer of paint, I would need to just quickly go over it with a torch and make sure I popped any bubbles so that I didn't end up with little pinholes like this. So I think it still looks a really good piece as it is. I will go and try and see if I can do anything to rectify these little holes maybe a little bit of sanding and then just try and fill the hole with a little bit of paint and do some more resin. I'm not sure yet, but I think because it's not perfect, it'll be a good piece for me to experiment on in any event. The sides all turned out really good. I think it's a good piece of art. I like the colors um, and really, really enjoyed the process. It's been a long process. It's taken me a long time because each of the layers has needed a certain amount of time to dry before I could put more paint on. Then there were a couple of layers of resin. So it's definitely an investment in time and also an investment in materials because it does use a lot of paint and a lot of the, um, the, the medium, but I think it can create a really nice and interesting effect. So I'll definitely try something like this again in the future. So it's been a long video. Thank you very much for sticking with me throughout this whole time. And I hope you are feeling inspired to maybe have a go at some blob painting yourself. If not, then I'll see you around on the channel for another project coming up very soon.